I've been talking about recording a video to tour my shop and my toolboxes for a while now. Um, but I've been working on cleaning it up over the past few days and thought maybe now would be a good time. Uh, so I'm going to kind of show you around here, what I do in here. Um, then I'll uh, talk more about the tools and sort of some of the infrastructure stuff around here. Maybe show you a few tips and tricks and uh, talk about what's good, what's not good, um, what I have planned for the future and stuff like that. So uh, you'll see a bunch of toolboxes here and I'll get into that in a moment. But well, let's kind of walk around first and see what we got going on. Um, I think this room is something like 40 by 40. It's a decent amount of square f uh, footage, but you can see that much of it is currently occupied, and I'll cover why that is. Um, but I pretty much only work on cars and motorcycles and metal projects in here. I don't really do any wood or anything like that. This is a Mazda Miata, obviously, on 33-inch tires. Currently working on that. Um, had to cut the fenders out and been working on this for a very long time, but finally kind of seeing the light there um, at the end of the tunnel. I've recently kind of rearranged what we see here. Um, those are two hardware racks. So this is an old barn that I bought from a elderly gentleman who had passed away. He left me a ton of hardware um, and I had a good bit myself, probably literally a ton. Uh, so this is kind of what I came up with. Uh, Plano tackle boxes. They work quite well. Uh, you can kind of grab them by the uh, store hanger and pull them out here and set them on there. What we have here is uh, actually two Seville Classics sold by Sam's Clubs uh, rolling shelves combined into one with uh, 12 tiers, I believe. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, so these are six tier shelves. And I just took two shelf kits and made one with a big gap in between. This is working out fantastically. I really struggled over what to do here, and I'm happy with the way that came out. Um, this was something like a hundred and some odd tackle boxes. It took me about a year and a half to sort all this hardware. It was just a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. So we have all kinds of stuff going on here. These are O-rings and grommets and electrical connectors and more electrical connectors and light bulbs for cars and turn signals. Uh, these are all metric bolts um, and some standard on the bottom. We'll get into that. These are all standard. Uh, that includes nails and screws. These are miscellaneous wall hooks. That one doesn't have a hanger, so it's a little harder to pull out. Uh, and then we've got some miscellaneous stuff up here. I see water hose parts and uh, springs. There's one for roll pins and set screws. It's just all kinds of stuff. I did leave a few blank ones on the top, so I have a little bit of room to grow. But for the most part, I should be pretty dialed there. Uh, let's see. Over here blank floor space fire extinguisher um, so I just had to rebuild my lawnmower after catching on fire um, and that kind of made me realize how vulnerable you are to that uh, I implore you to please get a fire extinguisher keep it on hand keep it maintained I'm all about these six tier Seville classic shelves and I have a number of them here just for part storage for cars and other stuff So each of those three are specific car projects. This one, everything on it needs to be sold. That's a car project I no longer have. This is more kind of house stuff. You'll see a, a cord reel on there. And uh, house shop slash shop, excuse me. And this one's all motorcycles. There's a tank, there's a seat, etc. Floor jack. This is the metal corner. This is where all my uh, scrap slash to be used metal is. Um, the scrap is in those three buckets. That's working okay, uh, but obviously this could be improved a lot. Uh, the wall hanger came with the shop, and that's been pretty nice, but I don't know, I've got a little bit of improvement to do here at some point. Um, I've got a hose reel with a half-inch air hose. Uh, there is a compressor on the other side of that wall, obviously, and that's been pretty nice as well, but sometimes it can be a bit of a chore to snake the hose out of here. Uh, however, I'm mostly battery-powered in here, so all good. I got a sandblast cabinet back there. That's to be revised. Everything that we see here is for sale. Uh, I've got two file cabinets. That's kind of what I was trying to make work. Those are like more the index card file cabinets. That's what I was trying to make work for my hardware along with those bins before I came up with the shelves that we just saw. I actually spent over a month completely refurbishing and painting that cabinet, making a cart for it, etc. And now I'm just going to get rid of it. Kind of a bummer. Um, 
these are leftovers from my hardware sorting project. I was, you know, trying to make what I could work uh, before I figured out the tackle boxes. This is a vintage stoplight that belongs to my father that needs to go back to him, so that whole shelf is going to be reclaimed. This is brand spanking new development. This is half of a shelf, and I had this giant 48 by 48 table here, and it was taking up a lot of floor space. This is where I'm working on the Miata. Uh, so you can imagine that it was much closer to the car. I had less room to walk and navigate around the shop, and it collected a bunch of junk because of horizontal surface syndrome. This is so far working a lot better um, it is very easily rollable so you can load it up with tools and then wheel it over to your your toolbox to put them all away uh, you can use the tools that or you can put your kind of tools on the second shelf and then work on the top uh, you can kind of store things within easy reach like this milwaukee vacuum which by the way i highly recommend if you read the reviews for it they're kind of meh but i absolutely love this thing it is perfect for miscellaneous um Shop dust for vacuuming the top of the workbench, for when you're drilling a hole and you make a bunch of chips, uh, vacuuming those chips up. Uh, very, very nice. Recently got into the small clamp-on vise. This one I overpaid for. Harbor Freight has a much cheaper one now, uh, but it's nice to have that flexible. This is a scrap piece of metal, but I'm likely going to go ahead and just get a full metal top for it. Because this is working out quite well and I would recommend it. This is my old Eastwood uh tool tray and obviously that's one that can kind of roll up under the car i love this thing i put some casters on it so that i could pull it off the pole it's you know infinitely adjustable on the pole and i can pull this one off and set it on the ground use it like on a creeper but it takes up almost as much floor space as that and now that is serving 95 percent of the same purpose so i'm likely going to get rid of this which kind of breaks my heart uh trash can with a lid like one of the movie theater type lids and that was because i previously just had the one that you had to lift up and throw stuff in and that kind of required two hands to throw anything away it's also on wheels uh, i try to keep everything in the shop on wheels like that giant stack of plywood is on wheels um pretty much everything in here and that allows me to be flexible in the space um, and have stuff where you need it or away from where you don't so um good stuff there Let's see what else we got here. This uh, also sold at Sam's Club. Highly recommend getting you a calendar like that. Um, it is a 36 inch Seville Classics Ultra HD cabinet. And this is where I keep all of my shop chemicals. And so we've got a spare roll of paper towels, which is handy when you need to grab some chemicals and go with them. Uh, oils on the bottom, bulk brake clean. Um, we'll talk about that in a minute, minute I guess. I use SureShot sprayers, and bulk brake clean is significantly cheaper. That being said, I always keep some cans around because I'm a very heavy user, user of brake clean. Uh, this is generally kind of organized brake clean, throttle body cleaner, penetrants, um, lubricants, way too much WD-40, hardly use that stuff. These are miscellaneous lubes like PTFE. Uh, CLP slash rust inhibitors. This is my favorite CLP brake free. Uh, I'll show you how I use that here shortly. And these are miscellaneous car chemicals. Quick tip on your potted chemicals, like brake clean or silicone paste, uh, is acid brushes. So I'm not going to pull this out of the foil in which I keep it. But I think we all get smeared by the end cap brush. So I just cut that off of the lid and use a separate acid brush. And that's worked out pretty well. Although, I just got my first um, NEC stick, and I'm looking forward to trying that. Those are paints. Not much of a paint guy, but that's what I got. Um, undercoat. Uh, I do have a small torch in here, like a map gas torch. So that's more or less what's going on in here. Um, sunscreen and bug spray and cleaner. All kinds of stuff. Uh, apron. I'm kind of new to the apron scene, but so far so good. If you walk down here in a shirt that uh, you don't want to get super nasty. And cutting fluids. Now while I'm thinking about cutting fluids, I wanted to show you another trick. Um, over here by the miniature drill press. These, this is a squeeze bottle with a needle tip. Uh, it's sometimes called a needle oiler. You can buy these on Amazon quite cheaply. And this is a terrific um, tap, tap fluid uh, applicator. You can really reach into your part and precisely put it in the hole. I've previously used squeeze tubes that were much harder to use. You know, not 
much different than this oil bottle uh, where it's just kind of like you know throwing a hand grenade where you just need a little bit so get yourself some needle oilers let's see anything else in here don't really think so uh, a friend recommended this to me it is like a cutting paste um, multi-purpose multi cutting wax and I used it at his house and it was super good but I haven't used it much here so you might give it a try yourself all right, welders. Um, I got this Miller Shopmaster 300 um, on a deal, long story, but it's got a wire feeder, obviously, um, and a giant gas cylinder. There's actually another one back there. Um, I took the cart off a different welder and put on this one. It took forever, uh, but it works quite well. What does not work well is that it's huge and it is connected directly to my breaker box. <clears throat> that is like four or six gauge wire, I think. And to get a plug for that, it has to be a pin and sleeve plug that costs like $250, I think, and I just was not into that. And I wanted to be able to weld at the full amperage, so that's what I went with on a 100 amp breaker. I don't know that I would redo that. It's a pain in the butt to have to drive that, drag that hose around. Um, and as a matter of fact, I'm kind of thinking about getting rid of both of my welders and getting one of the smaller all-in-one units, although I like, you know, having the industrial capacity. I mentioned another welder, and this is that. It is a Miller Dial Arc with a water cooler. Uh, this is recently acquired and I have not even used it yet. Uh, but it's supposed to work, so we will see. On the welding note, this is another shelf, although this is 36 inch 5 tier. Yeah. And it has various welding supplies, helmets on top. Uh, we've got some magnets and anti spatter spray and, you know, kind of all that jigging equipment on the second shelf. TIG rods on the third plasma cutters. Uh, this is a Amazon plasma cutter. That's the only one of the two that I've used and it's done okay so far. And welding wire slash rods. So much of this equipment came from a dear friend of mine who sadly passed away. Uh, but I got the this welder and the milling machine and the lathe uh, from his shop. Those are not yet hooked up. Um, I'm as a matter of fact working on the lathe. This is the carriage from it. It had a sheared uh, roll pin, so I just need to get the oil changed basically in it and get that carriage back on, um, wire it up, and I should be in motion. This is a rack full of grinders right now and uh, various consumables, including grinding wheels and wire brushes. Uh, those are grinding wheels for hand grinders. These are miscellaneous cutting bits and things like that, and bandsaw blades. Which reminds me that we did not look at the bandsaw. Now this I'm quite proud of. My friends are going to roll their eyes at this because I've shown this to them so much. But I took a Harbor Freight stand, put the swag port a band table on it with a Milwaukee uh, port a band. Now the thing is that this is a battery powered one, and I absolutely loved the foot pedal on the previous um, wall powered one that I have but it will not work with a battery one. So what I did is I used an old tractor choke and connected that, connected that to an old linkage that I was able to put together to pull the trigger. So I'm going to, and here's where the cable comes up on the back side. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull the lever up and you'll see it pull the trigger. So let me pull up, put a battery in there and show it off for you. Cool, huh? I'm really pleased with that. I get kind of tickled every time I get to use it. This table came from my friend. I was initially so excited about it. It's a steel top. It is four by eight. Um, but I quickly kind of got over the excitement. It is really big. It takes up a lot of real estate in here. And so I have been thinking about getting rid of it. Time will tell. For now, I've got a lot of stuff stored on it, so i got to figure out what to do with that. Um, Kind of crummy bench top Craftsman drill press, two thirds horsepower. Doesn't go slow enough for a lot of the metal that I work on. That is soon to be replaced with a floor standing one. This is a Harbor Freight three in one, which is much maligned uh, by many people, but it served me okay so far. I used it to roll the fenders that I welded into the Miata. 
And this is a brand new acquisition. It is a Eastwood box and pan, pan brake, 12 inch. I have a giant one, but this will be much easier to work with for some small projects I have. There is uh, Evaporust, and I'm currently using that to, first of all, uh, clean this motorcycle tank. And secondly, um, clean up some old tools that were left in the shop. So those are to be put away. And what else do we have here? Keep some spare cardboard on hand for putting on the bench tops. Like there's an example of how it's used. And as a matter of fact, I kept much of the cardboard that was that my toolboxes came in for really big, nasty projects. And an oily rag can just right. I have quick jacks. I store them under the table. I'm not a big fan of quick jacks at the end of the day. They're cumbersome. It's kind of faster just to use a regular floor jack. Now this table I like much better than the giant one. It is, I think, four by five and a half. Uh, it's just, it feels like the right size to me. Uh, it came with the shop. It's a much lower height, which often comes in handy. It puts the vise at a nice height. Vice came with the shop. Um, these are some generic uh, plastic jaws from Amazon. I also have some uh, aluminum jaws. This piece of iron came with the shop and I found myself using it quite a bit, but it has a crown to it and I found myself wanting a flat one. So I found this seller on Etsy that sells railroad track that is milled. Uh, I think he only mills the top. I also got him to mill the sides. So it is square on three sides and the cut is as well. So this has been quite nice to use. Uh, it takes up a decent amount of real estate on the top of my bench, but you could just as easily throw it underward, under. And speaking of which, I have a bead roller. That's one of the clamp in vice ones, not very fancy. Um, shrinker stretcher from Eastwood. And there's a giant anvil down there that you can see has seen better days. It's all YouTube video of a guy stick weld one up one time and then mill it flat. I might think about doing that someday. Clamps on the table. Um, I thought this was a clever solution, but I don't end up liking it very much. First of all, you lose this side of the table. Secondly, uh, for a clamp that is kind of in the middle of a bunch of clamps, you got to awkwardly reach in there and unclamp it in order to get your clamp. And then when you come back to clamp it, you invariably are going to have to adjust it before it will clamp correctly to the table. So, eh. I recently found this on Amazon, and I'm pretty stoked about it. It's a... Lahaya multi-pack abrasive roll, uh, 150 to 400 grit. They also sell it up to 600. I wish they sold one down to like 80 or something. But it came with these cool foam blocks, and that has already come in handy for me. Uh, and it is Velcro, uh, so that the paper sticks, and you go the same. So that's a win. I keep just a couple of things in the center of the table, including a bunch of kind of spare rags that are dirty, but not quite ready to throw away. Those are perfect for cleaning up spills and gloves that I'm not quite done with. As a matter of fact, these gloves belong in there. And on that note, these are the best gloves I've ever used. These are Milwaukee Cut Level 2. I think they're called dipped gloves. And they breathe, unlike the nitrile or uh, latex but they also keep your hands protected from chemicals, uh, so they are quite, quite nice. Uh, and I really love these as well. These are Harbor Freight leather gloves. Um, I use those outside in the yard a lot, or picking up heavy things with sharp edges and stuff of that nature. More six-tier racks, uh, oil drain pans, and uh, small buckets. That is sandpaper, um, Milwaukee vacuum. This is, these are toe plates, but that's also chipboard uh, cereal boxes for template making. These are little yogurt containers, which I find quite handy um, for miscellaneous chemicals and stuff. That's an ultrasonic cleaner, but I use that quite a bit less now that I'm turned on to Evaporust. This is spare uh, sandpaper, much like I don't want to throw away some rags yet. I don't want to throw away some sandpaper yet. Um, steel wool and scotch Rite pads. That's a toaster oven. Um, waste oil. So I recently, I've always stored waste oil like everybody else does in like a five-gallon bucket. That became unruly, um, and I recently found this two-gallon container that I'm using instead, 
and I'm finding it much easier to just dump two gallons at a time. Uh, I can basically take some almost every time I go to the dump. This is a brake bleeder. I hate it. Um, I've just not had very good luck with it. It overfills the master cylinder. Meh. That is a big battery charger. These are empty um, cat litter boxes for miscellaneous stuff and a big giant catch pan. I keep all of my jack stands on one shelf and uh, that keeps them out of the way, which is quite nice. I hate not having my brooms hung up, so I'd like to get that fixed. Kind of proud of my calipers there. Inside and outside stare at giant ones. This one, and we're getting kind of dark here. As a matter of fact, sorry for this, but let me go grab a light. Right off my rack there, see, huh? Oh, and by the way, I'm using these hooks. Um, I'm out of spares, so I'll just show you one in action. Um, those are hooks that I bought off Amazon that uh, just hook straight to the wire rack. And I've got a creeper on one and a small ladder, which is quite handy on the other. Uh, there is a Harbor Freight stool, like folding stool. That's the Milwaukee Underhood Light, which I like quite a lot. I have way too much scrap wood, uh, but I use it quite frequently, but I definitely don't need this much, so I should certainly try to go through it. Uh, some miscellaneous car parts and oil filters I keep up there. The far left, this is actually just hollowed that out last night. That's an old Tecton case that I hollowed out and put in my rubber hoses and fuel lines, windshield wipers, etc. This is a parts washer, which I recently restored and came with the shop. Harbor Freight sander, which needs fixing. Capacitor, took a dump in it. Giant fan for the summer. Bandsaw that I got from my uh, departed friend, as well as a Mittler Brothers tubing bender. Now these, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to see very clearly, but I've got three uh, saws back here. I've got a Milwaukee miter saw, a Milwaukee table saw, and a Milwaukee abrasive saw, uh, abrasive chop saw. And those are all three on uh, rigid folding carts so you can kind of wheel them outside and keep the dust out um, and obviously I would like to get these carts out of here so that I could access those a little more easily but everything is on wheels and it's really not that big of a deal if you need to get one on these carts um, or racks I should say this one is kind of miscellaneous junk on the bottom that needs to be reallocated but the top is for car projects that I'm currently working on so there's the Miata front bumper and two fenders and airbox. This is a really great pro tip. I would highly recommend that you get a wire rack just to do this kind of thing. You can imagine how much space that would take up if I needed to store those on tables or something. Um, so I found it really, really handy to have a spare rack just for putting some car parts. Go ahead and show you how accessible this is. This one has various uh, power tools on it. So Milwaukee blower and uh, backpack blower. These are all chainsaws. These are all Milwaukee chainsaws. The um, 16 inch, I've got a top handle. Uh, this is the Milwaukee hatchet, M18 hatchet, which is one of my favorite tools, period. This thing is awesome. It will cut down a small tree and process hundreds of small trees. This is the smaller M12 version, uh, which is fine. They released it a couple years before, so I had fallen in love with that before the M18 one came out. These are axes and um, bow saws, and then finally Milwaukee lights. That's um, M18 and M12. This one is a bit of a catch-all. Uh, it's got some car parts on it currently. Those could be re better reallocated or used. Imagine that. Grease guns and funnels, and more funnels and miscellany. Uh, should end up with a better version of this at some point. This is spare PVC. It could go in a better spot, but there it is for now. I've got a press from Harbor Freight that I put on wheels, which is handy, so I sometimes wheel that out to use it. This is a planer. I've never used it. I just kind of happened across it. I've got some um, saw horses back here, acetylene torches, a small wood bandsaw. I've got some car transmissions. Uh, pro tip is to put those on Harbor Freight dollies and then you can roll them around and they take up a smaller footprint 
been laying sideways propane heater and this is a giant uh, brake that I got from uh, my friend that passed away. This is that shelf on which everything is for sale. I used to use this before I found the um, six-tier rolling carts. It is obviously much bigger and more cumbersome, uh, but it is nice and heavy duty. And those are all spare cases from my tools in the toolbox that need to be sold or given away or something. So, without further ado, a little bit more rule, uh, review of the shop and then we'll start going through the drawers. So. Uh, I think it was late 2020, no, excuse me, late 2019, early 2020, that I started buying some better tools. I have always, you know, used tools just like everybody else, um, you know, whatever you have lying around, and then incrementally get a few things here and there. But then I got a few new tools, and it was like, wow, this is actually pretty nice to have what I need and a nice version of it, and then I just kind of never stopped from there. Um, I ended up buying all these toolboxes, and what we're seeing here are two end lockers. Um, we've got three bottom uh, 56 boxes, all Series 2 U.S. General from Harbor Freight, two top boxes, and one 26. Um, I also have a rolling 30-inch tool cart. I'm, I really like that thing, but I'm also thinking about getting rid of it since we now have this. And also thinking, you know how I had that, um, that shelf on which I have the parts from the cars that I'm working on? That's really what this is great for, is as you're working on a car, you can throw some parts on it. But I feel like using half of a 36-inch shelf, similar to what I'm doing here, would be even better because you could put three tiers on it. It wouldn't have the side handles to interfere, stuff like that. So, I don't know. Not making any changes quite yet, but that's what I'm thinking. Um, before we get into the boxes, I had previously made this. It's just a wall mount with PVC that is hollowed out for various drills and stuff. I used to keep actual drills in them. Uh, I no longer do. Those are in drawers. This is a heat gun. This is, and I'll show you how that's cut out. Temperature gun, electric drill, soldering iron, uh, timing light, heat gun, and hair dryer, which can sometimes come in handy. This is an old um, heat gun, or uh, yeah, heat gun that I had Temperature gun, excuse me, that I had prior to the Milwaukee one and a 3D printed um, holder there. Spare scissors, kind of hate this setup because I'm always going for the one that's in board the most. Um, and I mentioned earlier that I use Sure Shot, so that's the initial one that I had. It's great, but it sprays a very fine mist, and therefore I got this one that sprays a uh, you know clearer shot. That's been pretty good so far. Um, not a lot of complaints there, but it doesn't fully replace a regular brake clean can. This one I have not yet had good luck with, the kind of single rechargeable one. It's kind of underwhelming, but I'll continue to use it. Glass cleaner and simple green. So these are just kind of my most used chemicals that I want to keep in easy reach. So that's why they're out and not in the, the previous uh, cabinet. Progressive soup can with phone mount so you can video conference with your friends, work on cars together. Um, okay, yeah. Um, Sharpies, paint markers pencils and mirrors and magnets and toothbrushes. We'll talk about the Just Right oil can shortly. On the tops, um, so obviously most of the US Generals you've seen have the, the tops open. I didn't like that. I prefer being able to use the entirety of the top and not having it collect dust and everything in this old dirty shop. So I close the tops. I use the rubber mat that comes on top of the toolbox. I put that on top of the top box and then put all my cased tools there. So we've got tap and die set and radiator cap adapters and just all kinds of miscellaneous uh, cased tools up there. And also on this one, that's an old grill for my dearly departed Mazda pickup. Love that truck. We've got this Alco for the breaker box. Yes, I know this is not meeting code. Uh, please don't tell. I've got latex gloves. Uh, the zip tie pipe organ is what I call this, and a friend turned me on to this. It's expensive, it's like 50 bucks for this stupid thing of different height um, cylinders basically, but it holds all your different height zip ties, and it's pretty indispensable at the end of the day. It's on magnets, uh, so you can stick it to something. That is one that I would recommend, just close your eyes and press the buy button. I've got bread ties and also little Velcro straps that I use in various places. Um, 
these are drill bits that unfortunately wouldn't fit in my drawer, and tape in Little Harbor Freight U.S. General uh, trays. This is a piece of aluminum because flat surfaces are hard to find. That one has been milled. Oh, I never mentioned that I also got um, a planishing hammer and an um, English wheel. Recently, I have not uh, yet used those in earnest. I've kind of tried them out, but not used them. Um, stereo system. I bought this kind of Chinese Pro-Rec uh, DJ system on uh, Amazon. You can see that it, too, is even on casters. Uh, and it's been pretty good. It bumps. It's not quite as much as I was hoping. I was hoping it'd be like a, you know, car with a couple of thousand watt amps or something and make your hair stand on end. doesn't quite do that. But, uh, but it'll rock. Uh, by the way, this shop is on Alexa. I'm not, I'm not going to say that too loud because so, it will respond to me. Uh, but that turns the lights on and off, and that's really handy because I can tell it I'm going to the shop, and it'll turn the lights on, it'll turn the music on, et cetera, et cetera. So that's uh, been really, really nice. Okay, let's go in. So starting at the right, in the end locker, I keep paper towels, um, a pad on which to lay in the uh, driveway or on the concrete, you know, whatever I need to do. Some spare zip ties, Kleenex are essential. There's a heater for when it gets really cold. Uh, the funnels that I try to keep the cleanest. And various sandwich and snack bags. You can see I went all in on the Milwaukee gloves. Top right, uh, razor blades and tweezers. Also, props to my girlfriend for really helping me get all of these completely labeled. Uh, that is pretty huge. I knew where everything was, but I still mixed certain things up. The worst possible culprit was files. Every time I went for a file, which is very frequently, I would open the measuring drawer. So, anyway. Uh, razor blades. So, miscellaneous new single-edged and uh, uh, knife razor blades and a couple of knives. A scalpel and scalpel blades, which is quite good, too. This is a cuticle cutter for uh, hangnails that you will definitely get, and tweezers for both assembly and pulling out the odd um, piece of metal that you get in, the, or metal splinter that you get. Tape measures and calipers. I've got a 6 inch and an 8 inch caliper. This is my favorite tape measure. Really super compact uh, 6 foot tape measure. I use that for 90% of my measuring. Um, really like how tiny it is. Digital angle finder. The pocket ref. Never used it, but gotta have one. Wire brushes, a bit of a wreck right now, um, but I've got a lot in there, and I most frequently use the brass ones. Oh. Scrapers and putty knives and that sort of thing, uh, decal applicators. PPE, personal protective equipment, including gloves, uh, dust masks, and uh, safety glasses. I really prefer these safety glasses, to be honest. They go down the furthest on my face. If I use a smaller safety glass, glass, then sometimes it feels like I could put my finger between the glass and my eye, uh, and I will feel things hitting there when I'm grinding or something. I should probably get rid of many of these gloves because I pretty much just use the ones that we've already seen. This one is miscellany. I got the Dahmer safety glasses, and I'm kind of liking those as well. Um, but just some various milling equipment like parallels and stuff that wasn't worth labeling. Machining tools like end mills. Um, haven't gotten into those yet because I'm not using the machine tools. Nibblers and shears. I'm using these on my current project. Uh, that's an M12 nibbler, M18. And this is a, like a drill adaptable one, which at the end of the day, I probably shouldn't have got. That isn't really applicable for me. Mallets and other machining stuff. Um, those are all body mallets. And this is a sandbag that does not yet have sand in it. Riv nuts, riveting and torque wrenches. This is a riv nut tool off of Amazon and I love it. It is awesome. These are all the dies for it. Uh, this is a smaller hand version of the same thing. M12 Milwaukee riv riveter with the long nose rivet kit. And these are all Tecton torque wrenches. So. I bought pretty much every tool that Tecton had. Um, that is probably no longer the case now that it's been a couple of years. But in some cases, I have things that are going to seem excessive or duplicative. Um, and this is maybe one example. So these are their uh, split beam torque wrenches. And uh, these are the normal, what do they call them? Micrometer. 
Um, but sometimes I just wanted it, and sometimes I just wanted to try it. Like, they released these uh, after I had already bought the first ones, and I thought they sounded kind of neat, so I thought I'd give them a try. But we've got all the way from the big boy to the tiny one. Uh, that's pretty handy because it can go down to small inch pounds. This is all measuring stuff, nothing super novel here. A few uh, calipers, and these are all my rulers and calculator, contour gauge, all that jazz. Files. Okay, so this is, you're gonna roll your eyes at this, but I bought all new FURD files, and I had quite the drawer of files, we will see it later. And that was just like everybody else's, it's kind of, you know, just files that you accumulate through the years, but they were all dull. I could never find the right one that I wanted. And so I said, screw it, we're going to do this. So I went all the way down to their smallest chainsaw files, which unfortunately I had to buy in bulk, and now I have a bunch of extras. Um, but I got, uh, what do they call them, like second cut and bastard cut. Uh, so fine and coarse, basically, in 10 inch and 12 inch. And uh, a couple of 14s because occasionally you need some big boys, and these are rasp rasps, and one particular file that I quite liked from the old collection got to stay, as well as down to the small um, fine files, and these have been quite handy as well. These are an underdog. This is like a crappy $8 set off of Amazon or something um, of diamond files, and you can see that they're almost more abrasive than cut, and they are quite good. These bent ones will get in some places where you just simply cannot get with a straight file. So that's kind of recommended. Torches and welding stuff, so you'll mostly see gloves, but if we look underneath, we'll see quite a few torches for acetylene. There are a number of those here, including a big boy. I guess I'll show that off for a sec. How about that, huh? In case you need to build a ship. And wire brushes and flux and strikers. All right, this is probably the most excess. Battery ratchets from Milwaukee. Everyone they make except the brand new pass-through. Um, and that was another thing where they just kind of released some new ones and um, saw that they were slightly, like, they were different enough that I wanted to try them. Uh, the newer ones, I think, are favor RPM over torque and generally have smaller heads. So I wanted to try those out. So this is a good example, actually. The um, This is the later released one. So I already had this one, and it's got the big head, and the new one has a much smaller head. So I just kept the old ones around for now. I'm not sure if I'll keep them forever or what. Baco adjustable wrenches. I'm a big fan of adjustable wrenches. They come in handy for a lot of stuff, not the least of which is bending metal. Um, you know, you can use it to put on a small piece of sheet and bend it. So uh, I went with Baco, and I got basically all of their sizes of adjustable uh, from really tiny two really big and that is pretty cool one thing about these toolboxes um, the mats can stick to whatever you put on them so in this case I've put down a piece of pig mat or oil dry which I should have shown you I have right here I recently covered it up with a welder so that's too bad but pig mat is quite nice as well you can see that I've got some again under this leaf carriage These are, um, man, what do you call them? Not, um, I mean, they're sheet metal hole punches. I can't remember the exact name right now. Um, but they make basically speed holes in metal. God, it's driving me crazy. I can't remember the technical name. All right, this is um, welding supplies and hacksaws. Uh, so welding supplies in this case include like um, copper backings spatulas and stuff uh, for thin material. Also uh, TIG electrodes. This is, um, so this is an insert for 35 thousandths wire. I currently have 25 thousandths in the welder, or 23. Um, welding tips and markers and soapstone, etc. That's one of the few tackle boxes and drawers. We'll see another one shortly. This is a air reciproc reciprocating saw and some hacksaws. Pry bars. Um, I already had the Craftsman's, I bought the Tectons, and I would defend having two of the same size. Uh, that can be helpful in many cases. And then mostly <clears throat> crowbars that I've collected throughout the years. Cat's Paw is super useful for taking out nails. 
small pry bars, I use those probably most frequently, uh, and also ladyfoots. Punches, chisels, and countersinks. This is a handy drawer. Uh, these are all Tecton's punches. An optical center punch. Look those up if you don't know what it is. That's pretty cool. Brass punches. Um, and these. I am a big fan of these. So I think it was Finnegan that turned me on to these. These are um, basically transfer punches. I forget the exact nomenclature that they use, but um, you can thread this thing in a hole. Heck, let's just get one out and see it. Uh, these are the non-threaded ones, but anyway, you can see where we're going with this. You stick this in a hole, and then you can put a piece of metal up against the hole and smack it, and it will punch it for you. So it will transfer the whole layout. And so you can see that these are all threaded from uh, M4 to M24, and standard as well. Those are gasket punches. I used some of those last night, actually, and countersinks. Those are number and letter punches. Spot weld cutter kits and chisels. I have uh, had occasion to use those in the past, and this giant Mayhew uh, punch, which I kind of hate the orange thing slides around on it. By the way, I want to comment real quick on... Like, you might be looking at this and thinking, wow, that's amazing. I wish I could do all that stuff. Well, like, one of the drawbacks of this, aside from cost and space and all that stuff, like, if I ever wanted to move, could you imagine moving the stuff? But, like, laying it out, it took forever to figure out how to put everything and where it should go and what made sense in terms of um, grouping with it. You know, why do countersinks go with punches and stuff? Well, in that case, there's not necessarily a reason, but that's just an example of things you might have to think through. And I guess I should also mention that um, the way that these are generally kind of laid out is we're going through the one that was more kind of fabrication based. Uh, this one is kind of small tools like drill bits and stuff. Uh, this is my main box, I would say. It's got uh, sockets and ratchets and wrenches and all that stuff. That is kind of specialty car tools. And then that one's almost like overflow slash house tools that I use a little less frequently. So continuing on and more of the sort of quote-unquote fabrication one, these are hammers. These are all of Tecton's hammers, including brass and dead blow uh, and rubber mallets. That's my most frequently used one. That's an old crappy mallet that I got from AutoZone or something one time, uh, but I used the crap out of that thing. I also really love the small uh, plum hammer. So I'd say between that, this mini sledge, and the mallet, that's probably a solid 90% of my hammer clamps and air hammers. I was kind of pleased with this. Uh, these are all Harbor Freight C clamps, uh, but I put them in Tecton wrench stores and that keeps them quite nicely. These are all Tecton um, kind of welding clamps and a couple of overflow hammers and air hammers. Chain wrench. You're not a mechanic until you use a chain wrench. Just kidding. Uh, but seriously, when you use one of those things, you feel like a hero. Uh, C-clamp pads, that's a good buy from Harbor Freight that you might not think of. They go right on the, the clamp and keeps things protected. And also I use a zip tie to keep small miscellaneous clamps. All right, moving on. We got the 26 incher here. And see, this is why I probably shouldn't have done the welder the way that I did. It makes it a little awkward to use this box and also, you know, walk. These are all drill bits that were left over in the shop, basically, or that I had loose, um, and I kind of just laid them all out in a drawer. Generally, according to size, from smallest to largest, and I still use them on occasion when I don't want to use a nice drill bit. Uh, but for now, uh, I try to use nice ones when I can. Uh, by the way, these are really cool if you haven't seen them. They are the ones that would not fit in the drawer. These are Norseman Vortex. They have kind of the spiral point at the top. And that really makes them hog out the hole um, without having to drill a pilot hole or change drill bits four times to drill a half inch hole in cheap metal or something. So really, really like those. 
Next up is taps. So these are all taps and tap wrenches. I just recently got a ratcheting tap wrench for the first time, except I had a gear wrench one, but I didn't like it all that much, but I'm really excited about having a nice ratcheting tap wrench. Dies. Uh, the die drawer, a little underwhelming. Not a whole heck of a lot going on there. Um, but that's what we got. By the way, uh, I recently just said screw it because there were some occasions where I could not find the tap or the die that I needed and got all of the Irwin tap and die set. Uh, so those have been pretty nice so far. Threading and drill guides. So these are thread chasers by Lang Tools. Significantly cheaper, but apparently the same thing as Snap-on. Drill guides from Big Gator Tools. Um, haven't had occasion to use them yet, but they're supposed to be really great. These actually work. My dad got me these, and I thought they were kind of gimmicky, but they are bolt cleaners. You can see it's got that little, I don't know, wire brush situation going on inside. And you basically thread your bolt in there and screw it around a few times, and it cleans the threads off. Thread files and an old crappy tap and die set that I previously had that I just didn't want to throw away or anything. Drill bits and drill bit sets. So I prefer the Norseman Magnum drills, and I have a kind of normal index and then the full uh, super index. Those are left hand drill bits for extracting. Um, right angle drill, M12, M18. This is the M12 with interchangeable heads, kind of a clever tool. I have step drills slash unibits. These are life changing. They are incredible. Highly recommend you get yourself some step drills. I think uh, Project Farm did a review and DeWalt's were by far and away the best, so I have some DeWalt's here. And this is an extra index that I acquired somewhere, so um, I kind of start off with those with big heavy drilling and sort of save my magnums where I can discretionarily. Die grinders and dremels, so I have the big Milwaukee die grinder and then the two smaller ones. They're great tools, really recommend those. I'm loving the battery powered Milwaukee uh, rotary tool, I no longer really use the Dremel. These are Dremel supplies. Uh, these are the quick turn sanding pads that go on a die grinder and also die grinder bits. There are also some specific ones for aluminum down in there. These are 3M wheels for those quick turn uh, sander attachments, die grinder attachments. Haven't used those yet, but they're supposed to be great for scraping gaskets deburring extractors and drill ductors. So those are gear wrench extractor sockets. Those are extractors that um, I have accumulated. Uh, there is a drill ductor, and this is a no-go deburring set, like master deburring set, which has uh, been pretty nice. It includes like a sheet metal one, so you can drag that along the edge of sheet metal, and it will deburr it. And tie downs. That's just more or less storage. I've accumulated a few big tie downs and didn't have anywhere to put them, but I had an empty drawer there. Let's start with the meat and potatoes on this one. This is the main automotive box, and this is kind of the highlight part. So this is all metric. These are all tecton sockets. Uh, we have short and deep, six point and 12 point, and chrome and impact from four and a half up to 38, also some swivels. They're on Ernst rails. I generally keep them unlocked, so I can just reach down and grab a socket. But if you wanted to, you could turn them uh, and then pull the whole rail out and take it with you somewhere. Uh, so I've been pretty happy with the Ernst rails. The other cool thing about the Ernst rails is you can cut them down, which I will show you in a minute. Uh, these are the full, I think, 18 inch version? Yeah, um, they also come in 13 and eight. Uh, so I've really liked the Ernst ones. I tried this Olsa Tools one that's really popular on Amazon. Didn't like them so much, prefer the Ernst. These are metric wrenches, all tecton. And these are more your normal wrenches. These are uh, standard box end. These are ratcheting directional. Uh, these are ratcheting like the flat, you know, not angled. These are flex head. And this is one of the best tools in the house. That is the lever arm on which you can put your wrench and get extra leverage. That makes a great gift. And this is the same thing, but for sockets, I haven't really used that one. Um, I prefer the manual one if I can fit it in where I'm working. Metric wrenches two is all your assorted wrenches. So we have short wrenches here, including standard box end, flex head, flat, if you will, reversible and, uh, or excuse me, not reversible, but uh, not angled and then reversible here. These are flex head, double 
box in. These are extra long. Uh, these are half moons, honestly kind of gimmicky. I wouldn't buy them at the end of the day. I thought I could justify them and find a way to use them. Haven't. Uh, Tecton Zingled wrenches, and these are brake fitting flare nut wrenches uh, with flex heads. Now, I'm going to emphatically recommend that you go to Amazon right now and you buy the Capri Tools fin wrenches. Check that out. These come in so handy, and I can actually show you a quick example of that. Um, for now, those, those are some of the crappy mini wrenches that you'll get with certain items. And it's the same principle, like you need a flat wrench to get in places. And so here's an example of that. Back on our cart from Eastwood, this thing gets killed in the reviews because it's hard to get the casters on. Well, the reason is nobody can fit a wrench in there. But you can see my thin wrench would fit right in there. And you would not have a problem. And there are just dozens of times that I've used these wrenches so far. They are a big underdog, and I would definitely recommend that you buy them. Pliers one. I recently acquired some new pliers, so they're hanging out, but for the most part, I've put these in Harbor Freight, actually, pliers racks. And the reason for that is that this is a Tecton pliers rack, and you can see that it's fixed width, and so no matter how skinny your plier is, there's going to be extra room there. So if you're fitting a lot of pliers in a drawer, then these Harbor Freight ones work well to adjust the divider all the way up to where you want, and then you can fit many more pliers in the same space. So I start out at long, needle nose, and get down to short. I really love slip joint wrenches, or uh, pliers. Everybody seems to hate these. I don't care. I'm going to do my thing. And uh, that is slip joint pliers. These new acquisitions are actually thin ones, back on that thin tip. They are from IPS. These are Knipex uh, bolt cutters and uh, side cutters. These are little radiator hose pliers, or not radiator, but fuel hose pliers and Small rubber hose pliers. All right, these are all Knipex. Um, everybody loves the Cobras, and the Cobras are great, but I rarely use them, to be honest with you. Um, these are must-buys, though. These are the pliers wrenches, and I use them all the time. I actually used some this morning to fix the sink. In fact, I use them down to the small size. I mentioned earlier that uh, I will often use an adjustable wrench to bend metal. Uh, you can do that with pliers wrenches as well. They're just eminently useful. And we've got from the smallest to the largest here. As well as this has been pretty handy. I forget what they call this one, but it's got rounded um, jaws so that you could grab like a pipe, for example. They also make some with soft jaws, which I would like to get. Speaking of soft jaws, um, I keep many of them here. Some of these are Knipex. Those actually fit onto the pliers wrenches. Um, these are more generic ones. I think they were Craftsman, and they slip over the top of your regular, uh, you know, water pump wrenches and things. So that's pliers one. Pliers two is more specialty pliers. So we've got tin snips. We've got interior clip tools, safety wire pliers, um, snap ring pliers. This is a gear wrench set, and I think they're quite um, clever. You can just move the hole, the pivot hole, and these become internal or external. There are a number of sizes that seem to reach into everything, so I've been very satisfied with those. Uh, vice grips. These are spring tools, which are quite handy. I use those on, like, the two-stroke exhaust pipes, for example. Hold on by uh, springs, so you can reach in there and pull your spring off. There is another big boy. That is the largest... Uh, Knipex Cobra. Big boy. What else do we got here? These are hose clamp pliers. Those often come in quite handy. Uh, sometimes more trouble than they're worth, but uh, I wouldn't not have them around. Let's see. These are welding pliers. Definitely get you some of those if you weld. This is brand new. This is a uh, Sonoda chain link tool, master link tool for motorcycles and sheet metal nibblers. These are nice, but they'll hurt you. Like, you can smash your hand in there. Uh, they will give you a blister. I use those big leather gloves with them. Uh, so you gotta be careful with them, but they're good. It's for tripping, trimming sheet metal. 
grinders and saws. We've got uh, some regular saws, all hacksaw. This is pretty cool. So this is a Milwaukee, I forget what they call this thing, like, I don't know, some kind of cutoff wheel tool. Uh, and it's great. I don't really use it, but what I did do is I took one and converted it with a kit from Amazon to a belt sander. And you do this with a Harbor Freight belt sander, and the kit that I referred to from eBay adapts it onto this Milwaukee tool. This thing's been awesome. As a matter of fact, I've had that for several years, but Milwaukee actually released their own, so I bought it when it came out. I prefer the original, to be honest with you, the, uh, the adapted one. This is the Milwaukee-specific one, and I haven't really used that one too much. Grinders. Um, I got the, I, forget, I don't know what their marketing term for it is, but the flat nose one. Uh, regular, four, or this is a 5-6 inch grinder, this is a 4 or 5, and this is the big 7 to 9 inch uh, Milwaukee grinder. By the way, someday I would like to make a 6 tier rolling shelf, but all Milwaukee tools and have it easy to grab my ratchets and drills and impacts and all that jazz. Uh, let's see. Let's keep going with metric Allen sockets. So these are all um, Tecton, impact, non-impact, three-eighths and half. Um, actually, all these are half. Three-eighths, quarter. Regular wrenches, uh, long wrenches with ball ends. Got some giant ones under there. And socket-based ones. Low-profile sockets. Another neat buy, but I haven't found too much occasion to use them. These are Capri from Amazon, uh, but low profile sockets, so you end up with like a one inch socket, for example, that's that low profile. I'm sure it'll come in handy at some point. By the way, I want to touch on something real quick. You probably saw that some of these are rusty just from having sat in my box. Um, so obviously it's best practice to oil your tools down. I found that this is pretty clutch for that. This is a just right oil can. I fill it with that break free CR CLP. Um, I grab a rag and just smash it and then I can just rub the rag on the tool. And that beats the heck out of having to spray it on a rag and then use two hands to clean all your tools. So that has been really, really great. Torque adapters. These go in your torque wrench so you can torque things that you couldn't get a socket on. Crow's feet, all tecton. Um, these are their newer version. Um, and regular crow's feet and three eighths and half. Impacts and drivers. This drawer is underwhelmingly quote unquote organized, um, but it's full of Milwaukee impacts and drill drivers. I really like the right angle. That's another one that I remember kind of having my reviews, but it's quite good. My ideal impact combination is a high torque, uh, mid torque, both half, um, a 3 8 M12 stubby. That does great work. And so I rarely use the high torque. I use the mid torque pretty frequently, and then I use the uh, stubby pretty frequently. That's what I would get if I were buying impacts from scratch. And that is a screw gun. Torx e Torx triple square. I spent a lot of time on this drawer, um, and that's because it was just kind of hard to make all these sets fit the correct way in the drawer. Uh, and what I ended up doing was taking some of these Ernst socket rails and cutting them down. And then I was able to get mostly everything, and I say mostly because you can see that one, for example, curls around the front. Uh, but these are all Torx, um, safety Torx, e Torx, triple square. Uh, long bits. These are cool. Um, I'm not sure if I'll ever get to use them, but gear wrench e Torx. Didn't even know that was a thing. And some regular keys. Specialty ratchets. Son, we got the gold ratchets. I love those things from Harbor Freight. Uh, giant three quarter ratchet. I don't even have any three quarter stuff. This is my grandfather's though, so I'm going to keep it around. Um, these are like the quarter inch ratchet and a three eighths body and I don't know vice versa. They're the kind of specialty ones. These are from Astro, but I think Tecton just released some too. These are laser low profile ratchets, which are pretty cool. And you could pair those with those low profile sockets and really getting some tight tuts, but they've got pretty thin heads. And these are neat. Again, one of those things I'm sure will come in handy someday, but has not so far. It's like a ratchet that you can put on the end of an extension. I see that being handy on like a transmission bolt or something. And T handles. Picks and interior tools. So we've got picks, we've got um, interior pry bars, and these are like clip pullers and things of that nature. 
quite good. All right, let's go back up here for a moment. We've got standard wrenches one. Uh, these are all your kind of regular standard wrenches plus short ones. And those half moons that are eh, in standard wrenches two, which includes the standard side of that Capri set. Oh, by the way, I should touch on how I'm storing all these wrenches. Uh, and let me open this door to illuminate that. So talking about all the time that it takes to manage a big tool collection, like you've got to figure out how to lay all this stuff out in the drawer. If you've got a lot of stuff you want to fit in one single drawer. I never touched on these, by the way. These are bits that you can fit into your gear wrench uh, and make a gear wrench into like a Torx, for example, or an Allen. So kind of neat there. I use, uh, man, I have forgotten what they're called, but like just Amazon um, wrench racks. They look like this. I'll take a couple out here so you can see them. And I really like those too because they come in very long lengths. So you can store a big long set of wrenches on a single rack or you can cut them down into really small lengths like I've done in many of these cases. You can spread them out, which will tighten up the grouping of the wrenches. Um, you can have them, you can kind of see the general flow of that wrench set is offset. And then for these really weird hard to store ones, I've cut off some wood blocks and that lets me prop them up so that I can sort of finagle them to get more to fit in one drawer. Uh, those are angle wrenches and yeah, more of the gear wrench half moons. Screwdrivers and bits. So these are all screwdrivers. Um, I started off thinking I was going to convert to mostly handles and bits. And that has been fine, but I would still say that the majority of the time, if I just need a regular screwdriver, I'm grabbing these. Uh, pro tip that I would give you is the Tecton 8-in-1s uh, or 6-in-1s, whatever they are, um, are really great. And what I do is get one completely full of Phillips from 0 to 3. Um, this one is all flathead, and it's in a black handle as well, so that makes it really easy if you've got something with a lot of screws on it, a lot of different size Phillips and flatheads, you just bring these and it'll take care of everything. And those are Torx and those are Robertson slash square drive. These are cool. These are impact screwdrivers from Vessel. So you might have seen an impact screwdriver before and it looks like this. You put a bit on it, you hit it with a hammer, and it takes your stuff off. Um, this is apparently one that's integrated into the handle. So you smack the handle and it will twist. These are coin drivers. I got these from PB Swiss, but I've really primarily used this one because I'm scared to use my noise tools. Um, good for Zeus fasteners or things of that nature. Some long handle screwdrivers. I read a pro tip that these with the coating, like wood handle screwdrivers with the coating scotch brighted off, are the grippiest screwdrivers you can get, and that's been pretty, pretty right in my eyes so far. These are screwdriver bits for ratchets. Uh, some really small stubby ones from Tecton. I uh, wanted to mention one thing real quick. Uh, you might have noticed that I have no sheathing on the walls in here. And by the way, I never told you that the plywood, plywood was initially to rebuild the shop. I've given up on that. I need to sell the plywood. Um, I found that this impact screwdriver bit in a impact driver was the only way that I could get the screws out of that wall. I almost broke down when I started to disassemble the shop and I could not get the first few screws out of the wall with a normal screwdriver bit um, in a, in a uh, power drill. And then I finally found that that bit on a drill driver took almost every screw in the shop out and we're talking thousands. So that is huge. Anything else I'm noting here? I really prefer these hazets. I'm sort of a hazet nerd has it, whatever. Um, but these just have the best feel, feel to me. Um, there are some kind of gimmicky ones in here. This is Wii and that's extendable, whatever. The Philo, the ratchet sucks, I had to warranty that. Um, and I do kind of like the smaller Wiro ones. I generally like small tools. Ratchets and extensions. So this is another drawer that was quite hard to sort out. Uh, but I have a number of ratchets in here. The extensions worked out pretty well, so um, I've got like half inch extensions up this. You can see they're both chrome and impact, but then I've interlaced the quarter inch extension one, extensions in with them. So it's pretty clear what you're trying to get when you come get it. And these are all three eighths, I believe. Four ratchets, surely we've got some clever stuff here. Let's see. Um, these are gimbal wrenches from GearWrench. 
they're shiny and look like they'll be cool. I honestly kind of prefer these. These are the no frills straight ones from Gear Wrench. 81008 for the quarter inch drive if you're interested. But um, those just seem easier to use to me. The gimbals I've never really gotten into. These are all Tekton. Um, I prefer the non quick disconnect. So that's everything that I have. This is an old Mac. I actually have some nice tools. It's really a thing that the composite ratchets are, in the winter, um, less super cold on your hands. So that kind of comes in handy. I've got some regular driver handles in here. My girlfriend loves this one. This is uh, Calvan tools, that's what it is. But this like articulating thing. It's maybe a little gimmicky, but pretty cool nonetheless. And adapters and swivels and all that jazz. Man, I thought there would be more cool stuff in here to show you. Standard sockets and Allens. Uh, much the same as the metric one, but there are just fewer standard sockets. Uh, although we still have all of Tekton, so we go from swivel to short to deep to impact chrome quarter to three-eighths drive. Um, and Allens fit in the same drawer in this case. That's pretty much it for the main box. Then we get in the automotive, the uh, yeah, automotive specific box. So these are automotive sockets, including spark plug and wheel lug and O2 sensors, notepads, motorcycle specific tools. Um, this one came in really handy last time I worked on it. Um, you just set that in your chain, and then you can like use an impact on your counter shaft sprocket, for example, and not use the transmission to stop it. Wrist pin puller for two strokes and carburetor tools. Pullers. Uh, I recently got in a situation where I could have really used a puller, and so I ended up just buying a few to keep in stowage. Milwaukee packout vacuum. Eh, I used the one that we saw earlier. Electrical one, this could be improved. Someday I want to make an electrical bench, um, like a little rolling cart full of electrical tools, but for now, wire as a battery tester. Um, these are pretty cool. These are like, um, you put it in place of a relay in a car, and then you can manually turn it on and off and measure the current. Some crimpers there. Electrical tool, uh, two. So we've got wire strippers, jumper leads. This is the Milwaukee soldering iron. Uh, electrical tape, miscellany. These are very sealants, so Loctite, weather strip adhesive, not a lot going on here as you can see. Car tools one, mishmash, not as well organized as what you've seen before, but we've got clutch alignment tools, we've got pieces of timing belt to hold timing gears, uh, we've got seal pullers and battery terminal cleaners and oil filter wrenches, and jack pad and stethoscope and noid lights and transmission plugs. Car Tools 2 includes brake lines and brake line making tools, um, spring compressors, those are sort of press tools, some pullers, um, those are suspension tools. This is a really great tool for getting tie rods off. Uh, Gear Wrench makes one, but you stick that on your ball joint, you tighten the bolt, you tap it with a hammer sometimes if they're stubborn, and it will pull a ball joint right out. Riff Raff, uh, Milwaukee fans, indispensable in the summer, Milwaukee inflator, and fender roller, vacuum attachments, battery charger. Last box, almost there. This is more kind of spare, leftover, slash old tools, wood drill bits, which I have infrequent use for. Pipe wrenches, I did try to use one of these this morning, but I ended up getting it with that adjustable pliers wrench. Extra files, so this is what I had before I went to Ferd, um, and it was, yeah. Ugh. Caught guns. Those should be hung up somewhere and not waste in a toolbox drawer, but I digress. Jigsaws and circular saw. Highly recommend you store your uh, circular saws like this. That is just a couple of pieces of 2x4, or obviously 4x4 you could use, uh, in the bottom of the drawer. And then you can set your platen down straight on it. And a couple of jigsaws. This one I'm embarrassed to show. It's more of a catch-all. I really just use the tape gun from here. But uh, extra rivet tools. These are some drill bits, uh, drill bit holders that I don't normally use. Um, I forget what you call this thing right now.
but um, ram set. That's it. Hammer handles. All right, this was the extent of my tool collection really before I got into Tecton. I did have more sockets and wrenches here, but I've now taken those up to my house to have them a little closer. These are spare ratchets. Uh, these are all the push button disconnect ones, which I do not prefer, so I'm keeping these on the side. Extra extensions, I'll probably keep those around in case I break one. Extra wrenches and screwdrivers, kind of the old collection. Hammers, which I still do use occasionally, including these, these are my only claw hammers, so I do use this drawer fairly frequently. And old punches, I use those sometimes when I don't want to risk bending a new punch. These were my old torque wrenches. Things like that. This one, trowels. This is really actually pretty nice, not so gimmicky, the Milwaukee caulk gun. Um, I've been pretty impressed with that. It will, you pull the trigger and it obviously expels the caulk, but then when you let off the trigger, it will pull back a little bit and let off the pressure. Those are the band files from Harbor Freight that I used to um, adapt to my Milwaukee. And an old paint gun, which I have not used. Nail guns, router, sander. So those are Milwaukee nail guns, um, Milwaukee sander, uh, Ryobi sander. These are Milwaukee, like more, more gun style sanders and the new detail sander. That is the compact router with uh, plunge base and that is the metal circular saw. And finally, the locker on the left, uh, whiteboard, which is handy. Uh, Play-Doh, which can be sort of useful for metal shaping sometimes. These are all toolbox spare parts, including handles that I did not use when I stuck them together, things like that. Hard hat, spare pig mat, I keep a bunch of pieces of foam around. Sometimes I use um, a tool bag, and in the bottom I have a scale for weighing car parts. And that's it. Oh my goodness. Oh, uh, fridge. Fridge is really important. Uh, label makers are still hanging out. Um, rock Auto stickers or magnets. I'm the king. I would like to see your collection that's bigger. Though, I'm always willing to be humbled. Uh, and these, I gotta recommend Turtle Labs. Turtle Labs was really awesome to deal with. Um, they had this uh, rack for T-handled Allens, for Icon T-handled Allens, and I was into that, so I purchased one. Um, and I still keep the folding ones around from Eklund. But... I noticed that they had one for Bondus, but the Bondus one had Torx on it. And the thing about Bondus is their ball ends. The Icon ones are straight. So I still wanted my ball ends, uh, but I didn't want to have Bondus metric standard and Torx when I already have Torx Icons. So I emailed them and they uh, enthusiastically made one that just has uh, standard metric Allen. So now I can have my T-handles from Icon. And the beauty of these beyond being straight is that they have the the stub on the side there. Um, so I can have those and the ball ends from Mondus. Retractable hose reel, Milwaukee chargers. Man, that was a lot. We got a television hanging up, which is also controlled by the Elixir. And that, I think, is it. I never mentioned that this is for kind of the kit car project in the middle of the floor. So unfortunately, this just kind of has to be here. It is taking up an enormous amount of space. But ultimately, the plan is to get rid of this plywood and be able to put the kit car over there, be able to put the Miata more here so that it'll be closer to my boxes. But regardless, I just need to finish the Miata, um, get rid of this table, and hopefully just make a lot more floor space. I have a wood stove. The wood stove has never worked well for me. Um, and I would like to remove it. And when I remove it, I will put those carts over there and kind of get my space back, uh, maybe rework the uh, scrap metal corner, get rid of all this stuff that's for sale. So anyway, the, the long-term plan here is basically make floor space and finish projects. Um, and I guess one last comment. Um, I have been thinking about trying to downsize one toolbox, that one on the end just feels like too much. A good example was caulk guns, right? Those caulk guns could be hung up anywhere. Um, they don't necessarily need to be in a whole toolbox that's taking up space in my shop. So I've thought about using, you guessed it, a six-tier shelf to put my fridge on and things like that uh, in place of one of these uh, toolboxes and then theoretically get a lot more stuff on it and one fewer toolbox. But I don't know. I went through a lot to get these and I do really love the way they look uh, and they store my tools well. So I don't know. We might keep it like that. 
anyway, hope you enjoyed the tour. Uh, let me know if you have any questions.